I am Winnie Chang, Senior Lecturer at CFTE covering AI and finance. This has been a very interesting year for fintech as we move into improving conditions from the pandemic. It became a testing ground for whether certain financial technologies were just a temporary necessity of the pandemic or they're here to stay. The pandemic has introduced us to social distancing and reduction of contacts to prevent the transmission of diseases. Being able to pay without physically swiping the card or handing it to another person was as critical as wearing face masks or using hand sanitizers. But it wasn't just improved hygiene that we discovered. Contactless payments, not only is it cleaner, it is also a lot faster and much more convenient, a gentle tap and done. A survey conducted by Visa showed that nearly half, 48% of consumers said that they would no longer shop at a store that did not offer payment methods um, that are contactless. Many of us picked up new hobbies during the pandemic as we sheltered in place and suddenly found that we have a lot more time on our hands. This was a perfect storm for the rise of retail investing with easy access to trading apps like Robinhood and availability of information through traditional news media like CNBC and new social media channels like Reddit. Retail investing was a social experience in a socially distant time during the pandemic. While it's yet to be seen whether the growth of retail investing will continue, early this year we saw just how powerful this movement can be. The median retail investors only have 240 US dollars in their accounts, but when they all came together, they were able to send GameStop's price skyrocketing by 2,700% and brought on heavy losses at hedge funds that took the other side of the trade. Cryptocurrency goes mainstream in 2021. While Bitcoin prices are still going through wild spring this year, banks and central banks are taking cryptocurrencies seriously. On October 19th, the first Bitcoin-linked ETF made its debut for trading on the New York Stock Exchange. Banks like JP Morgan and Morgan Stanley have begun offering their wealth management clients access to crypto funds. Central banks worldwide are actively exploring the issuance of digital currencies. It has also become easier for users to hold digital currencies. In the US, PayPal started allowing users to buy, sell, and hold cryptocurrencies. Tesla, at one point earlier in the year, experimented with using Bitcoin as an acceptable payment. While this program is temporarily paused, there are expectations that it may return in the future. Cryptocurrency is now a serious digital asset class. Before the pandemic, bank customers were already getting comfortable with digital experiences, such as using a mobile phone to deposit checks. With the rise of investing platforms and crypto wallets, customers expect to control their money wherever they please. Digital-only banks or neobanks further show their strength. Customers can open accounts and cash their stimulus check swiftly from home. The number of monthly active users of neobank apps doubled between July 2019 and Ju June 2021, while those of traditional banking apps shrank a little. On August 13, Chime, U.S. biggest neobank, raised a round of funding that valued at $25 billion about the same as America's 13th largest listed bank. Neobanks offer convenience and much better user experience through digital channels. These are expectations and no longer nice to have. A survey found that bank customers perform over 70% of their transactions online. Digital banking is the new normal. Having seen what is possible, customers are demanding new ways of interacting with their bank. They don't want to think about banking. It is something that happens seamlessly as they go about their day, picking up groceries at Walmart, shopping for new furniture at Ikea, or buying a new electric car with Bitcoin. We live in a time where people may not be aware of who is providing the financial service, nor do they particularly care about what's happening behind the scenes. In this new world, we'll have accounts spread across various financial and even non-financial companies because the likelihood that one will optimally solve all our banking needs is unlikely. Banks and fintechs will be part of a larger ecosystem with greater focus on downstream products and services that permeate many aspects of our day-to-day -day lives. Bank and fintechs may seem invisible, but they are also gonna be everywhere.
just in a different form. Thank you, and now back to CFTE.